Okay, so here we're doing an example and we're given the problem that the random variable is the number of cars parked in a three car garage. So I'm gonna stop there. Number of cars, that's discrete. You can only have one or two cars. There's nothing in between that. And we're asked to find the mean and standard deviation for this particular problem. So I'm given my discrete random variable off to the side. And so this is saying, you know, the probability of no cars being parked in the garage is 10% up to our three car garage can have at most three cars with a 30% chance. Okay, so I re reminded you of the formulas here. You can probably see them on your notes. But the first thing I need to do is multiply each outcome, each possibility times its probability. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the 0 with the point 1 and get 0. Now I'm going to multiply the 1 with the point 2. So I'm multiplying the x with its probability and I'm showing you my work to get point 2. Multiplying across the next row and multiplying across the final row. Now keep in mind, all I've done is the inside of the formula. Now I need to add everything up. And I found the sum to be 1.9, which is the average. So I can go put that into my answer box. Now I'm ready to find the standard deviation. So I kind of just extended my table. So the first thing I need to do is work on this inside part of the formula. And so I've written it as x times the quantity, x minus p. It's the same thing as x squared times p of x. But the nice thing about writing it this way is I can now just say I'm multiplying the x's, the number of cars parked in the driveway, times the average. A student showed me this little trick. I really like it. So that means I'm going to take the x and the value from, that I've already gotten from x times p of x and multiply those. Now take my x and my outcome. So I'm not taking the 0.2 that you saw from the table. I'm taking the 0.2 because I already got that as a product. And it continues. My two cars times the original x times 0.4 and the three times the point 0.9. So again, I've now done each of these interior multiplications and I'm ready to add everything up. Totaled 4.5 doesn't really mean much because all I've done now is this portion of the formula and I'm ready to go ahead and subtract the mean squared, which remember we already found the mean, so we know what's going on there. Um, I'm assuming you'd probably just enter this whole thing as is right into your calculator. I've worked out a couple intermediate steps just so you can see it, but you didn't need to do that. I'm assuming that you just entered the original statement and got the 0 0.9433, etc. as your answer, and then went ahead and put it in your answer box. I rounded to two places after the decimal. Obviously, pay attention to the directions. And then one other thing to notice is notice that these items in my answers, I didn't move the decimal. I didn't change these to percentage because these are not probability. They are asking for a mean and a standard deviation. And then one last thing is, remember from eyeballing stuff, does my average make sense? Well, we talked about before that the smallest the average could be a zero and the largest is three. At most, none or all three cars are in the garage. And 1.9 is in between those, so that tells me I'm probably on the right track with that. The largest probability is to have two cars. and eh, that's pretty close. That was a star. <laughs> to having two cars. Um, there's equal amounts above and below that outcome. So if it's not two, it was going to be pretty close to two, and it was. And here's one more problem. Keep in mind, you might want to pause and try to solve it yourself. And also, I wanted you to notice that the x's don't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or whatever. Whatever this is that's being studied, and I don't know, we could make something up, but it just has the outcomes 1, 2, and 4. 
Okay, so asked to find the mean, I've copied the formula again for us, and my first goal is to do the inside of the formula, which is to multiply the x times the probability. So as I multiply across the first line, I get 0.7. Across the second line, I get 0.4. And multiplying across the third line, I get 0.4. But now I need to add those values up. And I get an average of 1.5. Remembering what we said before, that the average had to be between 1 and 4, which 1.5 is. And if I had to guess, 0.7 is the highest probability. So I would have expected the probability to be close to 1. Although if it's not 1, there's nothing below it, and there's only stuff above it. So if it's not 1, it's going to be bigger than 1, but not by much. If I was guessing, I probably would have guessed 1.3, but mathematically we see it's actually 1.5. So now I'm ready to find, whoops, wrong pen. Now I'm ready to find the standard deviation, and again, I copied my formula, but I'm going to start by getting my x squared by multiplying x with the previous values. So as I multiply x with the outcome from the first row, I get 0.7. 2 with the outcome from the second row, I get 0.8. 4 with the outcome from the third row, I'm going to get 1.6. And that just gave me the inside. Now I need to add everybody up to get 3.1. Notice that's not my answer. It gave me the left side. But now I need to put it in a square root and subtract the mean squared. And again, you should be able to enter that as is into your calculator and get 0.9219, etc. for a standard deviation of 1.92.